hi everyone so welcome back to my youtube channel if you have not been here for a very long time um this is a channel obviously i've had for ages but i usually post on instagram and facebook primarily these days um so if you're here from instagram welcome to my youtube channel it is a land of forgotten korean drama reviews uh, that might interest you right now in this time of quarantine and you want to watch some videos so check them out while you're here um, but actually it's something extremely exciting I'm sharing with you guys today here on YouTube because I knew I could make a really long video. I chat a lot, so there might be a lot of stuff that I want to share with you guys. So I am pregnant and we are so excited and we couldn't possibly be happier. Um, it has been a very <laughs> stressful time to be pregnant in <laughs> the world, but it's also just like a happy blessing and something that's like distracting us from the stress of all that other of all the other stuff happening in the world right now. So I want to talk to you primarily in this video about being pregnant in Korea and just like the steps that you want to go through to get like everything you can, can um, medically and just like some support. And then also talk about what it's like being pregnant in Korea during this virus situation and what that sort of looked like for me. Uh, and talking a little bit about that. I'm also going to make another video because I think some of you might be interested about um, my pregnancy journey and really the year, the past two years that I've spent with endometriosis and dealing with menopause um, treatment that I was given. So uh, it was eventful <laughs> two years. I've gone from um, menopause to pregnant this year, which is dramatic. <laughs> and you guys probably didn't know, it wasn't something I really talked about on Instagram or Facebook. Um, even my closest friends didn't really know like the pain I was dealing with with endometriosis. They didn't know the like struggles that I was dealing with with the menopause medicine and the side effects of that. So it has been very dramatic, um, but this is a really a silver lining to all of the, that situation. So being pregnant in Korea, when I first found out, I was like, oh, what do I have to do? So I definitely want to give you guys that information, um, at least like the early steps and what you can do um, after you've gone for your hospital check. So, and also telling you some things that are just different than America or depending on where you come from, I don't really know. I'm American, so I can sort of tell you the experience um, from my perspective. So let me give you guys some information about what's been going on in my life. So if you've been following me on here um, or Instagram for years, then you know I post twice a day, every day. And this year, um, at the end of December, just after Christmas, and from January to February, I pretty much posted nothing. Um, and that was because my first trimester was an extremely difficult morning sickness, um, which was really all day sickness situation. So I didn't leave the house. And that was actually probably a very good thing considering what was happening with the rest of the world and the virus situation. Um, so yeah, I was self-quarantined before that happened. Um, so I wasn't posting. I also didn't have the energy at the time to really be thinking about social media. So I was just like off it. And that's why, if you guys were curious at the time. So I found out um, at the beginning of January, and I should say, as I mentioned in the beginning, that I was dealing with endometriosis and a, a forced medicinal like uh, menopause treatment that was to help with endometriosis. So for a year and a half, I was going through menopause. Um, and that meant like, you know, just all the things that your mother or grandmother might have gone through that you know about. So it was definitely a struggle um, at the time, but that meant monthly or bi-monthly checks at the hospital. Um, we decided because my, my sis, and my endometriosis had like settled down a lot that we were going to reduce, um, move from the, me the forced menopause medication to a much lower dose medication that would bring my cycle back. Um, and this transition, there was a possibility that I could conceive during this period, but the doctor was very skeptical that would even occur. So it wasn't even something we really discussed. Um, he said it could take months to a year to conceive if we started trying. Um, and it was highly unlikely. And I think that pessimism wasn't something I was really thinking about. Um, I wasn't really so negative about it, but I just was like, we'll see what happens. Um, I just want to not be going through menopause at 32. Um, that was really intense. So yeah, we went in for my normal check two months later and the doctor told me that my endometrium lining was very thick and this ha could have multiple um, reasons but one of them was pregnancy, so I should come back a week later, um, which I did. And the doctor, um, I'm sorry, the, the technician who was doing the ultrasound 
um, was like eggy chip and eggy chip in Korean means baby house. Um, so the uh, embryonic sac had formed and obviously there was an embryo implanted, um, but we didn't hear a or see a fetal heartbeat at that point on the um, ultrasound. So the doctor um, told me to come back in another week to check for a fetal uh, heartbeat because they can't give you the certificate of pregnancy until they have that. Um, he was very negative and pessimistic um, about this. And I think uh, that was something for me, he speaks English very well, but um, it was very difficult for me to hear that kind of negativity. Uh, he kept saying, if, and if this is normal pregnancy and this, then this, and this. Um, and I think a lot of that was managing expectations. Uh, in Korea, if you know anything about Korea at the moment, birth rates are very low and infertility and fertility issues are very, very high. Um, I, you know, know lots of coworkers who've had tons of fertility issues and, you know, talk about it openly. Um, so I think it's something very common. So the doctor is trying to manage expectations. So the doctor was very pessimistic about me, um, having a successful pregnancy at that time. And that was very stressful to hear. Right now I'm in my 18th or, or just about a day for my 18th week. So obviously I'm in a much more comfortable place to talk about this. I didn't want to talk about it in the first few weeks or months. Um, but now I'm happier to talk about it. And I want to share with you guys about it, um, my experience. But at that time, I was very stressful hearing that and not knowing if I could tell my family or talk to anybody about it. Um, you know, obviously my husband and I talked about it a lot, but you know, usually I talk to my sister about everything, but I couldn't tell her at that moment because um, it was sort of hard to say without feeling like I was going to cry. <laughs> Even now, thinking about it makes me want to cry. Um, but yeah, so I was so worried, and you're just kind of like waiting to see that heartbeat. Um, so then we went back the next week and we saw the heartbeat and we got the certificate of pregnancy. This is important for the first step. Um, when you are pregnant in Korea, you should head to the bank to get the happy card. Um, basically the happy card is like a debit card that you can use. Um, if you have national health care. it is about 500,000 Korean won, like maybe 480 us dollars. I don't know the concert, the, um, conversion at the moment um but it is a substantial amount of money that you can use for anything baby related but i've used it pretty much exclusively for um the hospital visits and it should more than cover your hospital visits but i have you know obviously previous gynecological issues so i have lots of hospital visits um so mine will cover most of it i think um but which is really good because obviously healthcare here is great and much more reasonable than the states which is amazing so you to get that card though you need the certificate remember this we'll come back to it um if you call for information about the happy card there isn't that much information online i think every few years the bank that issues those cards changes um but this year it is uri it might change again so you just sort of have to keep checking on it um i recommend calling i called the oh, who did i call I think I called like the Tourist Information Center and they ended up giving me a translator that helped me find which one it was because the information I found online was like outdated, um, which bank I should go to and they said go to Uri. So I went to Uri Bank and I don't have an account there but I've had a Shinhan account for eight years and they don't do it. So I was very, very sad. Um, but you go to Uri and only you can do it, your husband can't do it so it has to be the pregnant woman. So I went with the certificate and um, was told that I couldn't make the card because my certificate was from a university hospital. Now, I didn't know I was pregnant before I went to the hospital and I didn't really have an inclination. I normally go for the pregnant for the hospital uh, checkup because of my endometriosis. So it was my usual hospital visit to the university hospital that I go to. Um, apparently, if you think there's a chance you're pregnant, <laughs> I highly recommend to save you this trouble, go to a local public clinic um, of the small clinic and that's the best option because they don't accept the document from the university hospital. They only accept it from a private clinic. So at that point of the day, I couldn't come back to the bank and go to the clinic and come back. So I went to the clinic the next day. Um, they did the ultrasound, confirmed I was pregnant. Then I get to the counter to pay for it and just get the printout document to take over to the bank. And they told me they couldn't give me a certificate of pregnancy because the um, university hospital already issued it. Uh, so you're kind of in this catch-22 situation and I probably looked like I was gonna about to start crying because I was like What am I supposed to do? Um, and then she ended up printing out documents that said I got the ultrasound and that I was pregnant on their stationery and I walked away with that and took it to the counter at the bank 
and after some chatting on the phone um, she determined that that was enough. So I highly recommend skipping the university hospital step if at all possible um, to get your card but then once you have the card it's very easy to use you just use it like a debit card when you're at the hospital or clinic or wherever you're getting your checkups. So that's step one. The second step is to go to the Bogunso. Um, so if you live in Korea and you live in Seoul specifically, there might be differences in other cities. There's important buildings like the Gu office where you register marriage, um, the Jumin Center where you register your addresses and lots of other things. And um, then the Bogunso is where you go for like medical things in your in your neighborhood. Um, and that's where you go your very first uh, checkup after you have the certificate, they will they will do lots of things for you there. They will do like routine tests and stuff that you could do at the hospital as well, but much cheaper or free. Uh, and they offered all of those to me, but I was exhausted that day and felt like I was going to throw up the entire time. Um, so I didn't do all of those tests that day. Uh, but they will give you three months supply of folic acid, which Korea really focuses on for prenatal care. Um, the, the, the hospital, all the hospitals I went to, uh, clinics that I visited, so the Bogunso, the small clinic, and the University Hospital all focused on uh, folic acid. So they give you free folic acid, which is great. And they also give you this, which is your um, the Imshinbu, the mother tag. And this will get you, it will allow you to sit um, on the subways in the pregnancy seats. You should just like hang it on your purse or something. Obviously, I haven't been on subways <laughs> recently either, but it's just sort of the certificate that says you're pregnant. So you can pick that up there. You can also pick these up in the subway um, offices in any subway station. They will give this to you if you have your certificate of pregnancy. Um, also, the thing about the Bowen Cell is that they will do tons of other things for you during your pregnancy. They will check up lots of things like your blood tests and your iron levels, and they'll just check tons of things. They'll give you a printout of all the options. It's in Korean. Um, you can Google Translate it. But my biggest problem is that simultaneously, as I just completed that step um, and was planning to go back to do all of these tests, which are free or very reduced price, um, the virus, coronavirus, hit. And so when that hit, the Bogunso became one of the locations, testing center locations. So I didn't feel comfortable uh, comfortable going back to the Bogunso and, and just doing all my routine checks, like my 12 week check and things like that, because it was just very stressful um, hearing that at the time. And I didn't want to be exposed, potentially exposed. If you're pregnant, you're obviously at a higher risk. So that sort of diverted my path. But if you are pregnant after hopefully after this virus has subsided, then the Bogunso will be a great resource, very inexpensive tests or free tests for pregnant women. Um, but sadly, I haven't been back since that day because of everything that's happened with the virus. Instead, I've been getting all my checkups at my university hospital and doing everything there. Also, the university hospital is more expensive than the local small clinics, um, the public clinics. But so normally in Korea, it's very easy to move from hospital to hospital or clinic to clinic. It's very common here, but obviously the virus has hit, so I didn't want to be going to lots of hospitals and exposing myself to whatever is in that hospital or exposing others in case I was, you know, I just the, all the paranoia that hits you. So I really just stuck with my regular hospital that I know and that I just didn't want to deal with any of the stress of looking for other places. Obviously, you know, we're, we don't, we're, we speak Korean, but not fluently. So it's just much easier in this situation um, to go to the place that I know. And the doctor does speak English and I'm not stressed out about that. So what that has looked like has been very dramatic. Um, but my pregnancy so far has been great. Luckily, it's keep <laughs> being good. Um, uh, my first, I've been healthy. My first trimester though was, it's hard to think about right now because I'm feeling much less nauseous during the day. Um, but that first the, from about seven weeks, but pretty much when we heard the heartbeat and saw it, I was nauseous all day. Um, and this was interesting. I, for the first time in eight years, I didn't go home during a vacation, not because I was pregnant. I didn't know, um, because we were trying to save money just in general and it ended up being a huge blessing. Cause if I had traveled, I probably would have traveled through China at like the worst time. Um, I probably would have been incredibly nauseous on the flight back or whatever had happened. Um, I would have been quarantined. All those things would have happened. So it was so lucky and fortuitous that I hadn't uh, planned to go home at that time. Um, very, very lucky. But I didn't go home then. And I was in Korea, so I was able to sort of just stay 
and rest. I'll try to keep make another video for you guys talking a little bit about the endometriosis um, and what that looked like in Korea. And if you have any questions, I know a lot of women are curious about that. Um, but obviously I'm not a doctor, so I can't really give you advice, but I can sort of tell you the experience that I had and going from menopause to pregnant in a year, um, has definitely been eventful and kind of wonderful and I'm super excited and the little monkey's about to start kicking now. So I'm like, I'm ready to start like feeling the baby all the time, not just a giant bump that has suddenly <laughs> arrived. Um, but it is very exciting and if you are following my journey, I'm sure I'll be posting more things about pregnancy on my Instagram as well. But it's, if you know me, I'm a pretty private person so I don't usually post a lot about my personal life on there. It's typically just um, pretty places to see and, and things like that. So if you want to see more baby stuff, let me know down below and I hope you guys are safe and with your families um, at this time and just please stay healthy. And I'll keep you guys informed. And there'll definitely be another video telling you about the labor situation and what that looks like. But hopefully I have a few others later. Bye, guys.